right. So um, one of the one of you had asked about using um, uh, a rolling mill and making an edge plate with a roll or making an edge plate and then using that with in conjunction with a rolling mill to uh, create pattern plates. And so uh, I've got a piece. This is a piece of uh, steel that I have. Um, this in this case is actually stainless steel that I have etched. Uh, using a vinyl resist, so this this had a vinyl resist. I actually was doing a double sided plate, but I went ahead and didn't etch it as deep on this side. But um, this was a vinyl resist, and then I, I peeled some of this off already. But I wanted to show you that on the front side, uh, this stainless steel plate has been etched. And again, you could etch uh, steel uh, with the same uh, aluminum etching solution uh, that I've mentioned earlier. Um, I think in this case, I think I maybe did salt water uh, on this. And salt water etch the stainless steel. Um, can't can't remember on this. I just happen to have this pattern plate. And um, and then uh, Elizabeth has uh, annealed. She's uh, stomp sheared and annealed a piece of copper. And so I just thought I'd show, you know, just by making a, a steel plate that you want to reuse over and over. You could reuse this with your rolling mill. It's, the steel is not going to get distorted, uh, and it's also going to make a nice in, impression because it's a harder material obviously in the copper. So uh, we'll set this up in the rolling mill. So we're just gonna adjust our, our tension uh, on our rolling mill. So I'm just gonna feed that in and kind of record where I'm at on my rolling mill. So I'll loosen this up and then I'll go back. And then because that steel um, is really hard, um, you, you wanna be careful that you are not putting too much tension. You can actually damage your rolling mill if you're not careful. Uh, some people will put a piece of paper over this backside. It's actually, a, a, I'm gonna grab a piece of paper and we'll do that real quick. Uh, just like a cardstock to protect the backside of your roller. Right. All right, so we've got a piece of cardstock. I just cut the, this is kind of some mat, mat board material. So I've cut a, a piece to kind of protect uh, the roller uh, as I roll them. So again, we'll set our tension for our sandwich that we've created. We'll set our tension so we're going to look at where we're at. 10 and 15. We'll come back between 10 and 15 and then I'm going to add a little material. This will be compressible so I'm kind of trying to allow for that. Right, and we're going to feed this in. So go over here. I can feel already that's a little a little easy. It's compressing quite a bit, so I'm gonna give myself a little bit more tension. There we go. And then you have to be careful, this may want to roll up, but you can see already we're getting a really nice pattern off that. take this, we could anneal this if we wanted to uh, before we try to flatten it. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just flatten it though. So I'm just gonna take a rawhide mallet, making sure I'm using a rawhide, we won't damage our surface. surface from that etch plate and that etch plate is completely unharmed completely flat and um, see we got some really cool texture even on our, our note card there our card material card stock but um, yeah this would be a way that you could start making etch pattern plates uh, using this uh, etching solution that, that uh, I'm showing you and um, and then making this repeated pattern uh, this later on this could be cut into bracelet forms or you know material for rings or whatever you want so just an easy way that you can start combining all these processes making stencils with your vinyl cutter uh, you know using etching combining that with roller printing and uh, start stacking those processes is almost anything's possible you start getting these really complex forms that um, you know 
that you really are able to develop in your work. So uh, hopefully, hopefully that was helpful.